Hey guys, I'm Sage Valentine and I'm back here to review another episode of AMC's The Walking Dead. This video is all about season 7 episode number 14 entitled The Other Side. So let's just get down to it. The episode pretty much opens up with a parallel between Maggie's day and Sasha's day. Pretty much Maggie is just cruising along. She's throwing knives. She's smiling and she's just doing what she normally does. Meanwhile, Sasha appears to be preparing to go after Negan from sharpening a knife to writing up a map and so on and so forth. And the thing about it is that Enid and Jesus are aware of what Sasha has planned, but Maggie doesn't. And we basically watch this day unfold leading up to the point in I believe it was episode at the end of episode 13 where Rosita comes up to Sasha and tells Sasha that she needs her help because she wants to go after Negan. So we see a scene where as Maggie is kind of cooking and Daryl is by himself I think he might be sharpening something too you can see like the shadow of the light in front of his face like his hair is already dark and then the darkness added to it's giving him like this shroud of darkness and Maggie comes over and she gives him some food a lot of people on Tumblr were complaining about that particularly they were complaining about I'm not sure why I was having problems saying the word particularly, but anyway, they were complaining about the part of Daryl being comforted by Maggie, and I will get to that once I get to that part of this recap slash review video. But anyway, Gregory is a wimp. He's hiding inside, but then again, I don't expect much from Gregory considering that Xander Berkeley is doing such an excellent job in conveying and translating said characters actions from the comic books to the tv show he is completely <laughs> gregory one thing that i love about xander berkeley is the fact that he plays and has played a lot of these devil's advocate type roles these roles where he's not good but he's not bad but you can't expect him to do anything to benefit anybody else other than himself and then we see a scene where Rosita comes and she's like talking to Sasha and trying to recruit Sasha into her plan. And we know that Sasha basically goes along with it. Now we learn a little bit about Jesus in this episode. We learn that he grew up in a group home. Now that Maggie, Enid, and Sasha are present at the hilltop, he no longer feels alone because when he first arrived to the hilltop, he found it close, or found it hard to get close to anyone. And then he mentioned also getting close to boyfriends. So now Jesus is revealed as being gay and that's what he is in the comic book. So gay Jesus is canon. So Sasha overhears this conversation between Maggie and Jesus. And they get up and they walk away and she heads into the trailer and she sees like this book and in the book like it's kind of one of those fake out books where they cut out the words and stuff and they put stuff in it and they ended up putting in bullets inside of the book and she gets caught by Jesus and Enid she tries to cover it up she reveals that she has a gun because Jesus is like why do you need these bullets you have a gun or something so Jesus tries to talk her out of this plan to go see Negan and he knows that Rosita is not present at the hilltop just to train people. But when he realizes that he can't do anything, he basically leaves. But you can tell that he is not happy about what Sasha's doing at all. But then again, when she brought this idea to him, he was a little apprehensive about it. Now, Enid wants Sasha to tell Maggie about this situation, but Sasha doesn't want to tell her. She says that Maggie needs you. She doesn't need me anymore. Now, on a side note, I am I'm not here for all of that. Sasha is needed in this group. We barely know anything about Sasha, and the idea of killing off this character sucks. On top of the fact that it feels like to me, regardless of all of the spoilers floating around, I had already known that somebody was going to get 
Holly's comic book death because when Carol and Maggie were kidnapped and they put the sacks over their heads, that was a nod to that whole situation with Holly in the comic books. So the idea of giving a character like Sasha this death and then having her say that she is not needed and all these other people are needed to me is really upsetting. But then again, this second half of the season, in my opinion, is really making me scratch my head because I'm just like, you got Rosita who wasn't angry. Now she's angry. Now you have Sasha who's a part of the team, but now she wants to sacrifice herself for the team. Like all of that just confuses the crap out of me, to be honest. And when I say confused, I mean like, I'm just wondering why the writers keep having to do this all the time. Like, why couldn't it be another character that wasn't as important? Because in the comic books, no shade, but Holly really wasn't that important. Holly was kind of nasty, and Holly was messing with Abraham and did not care how Rosita felt at all. See, Sasha cares, and it's sad that a caring character like that is getting killed off, but... That's just my opinion. I'm not a writer on the show, because if I was, I would have said, you know what, I wish that you guys would use another character, because I think that Sasha has been through more than enough in this series. And a lot of people are bringing up the fact that Shaniqua Martin-Green was um, cast in the new Star Trek show, and she can't do two different things and all this other stuff, but to me, like, I really wish, on another side note, that the writers would just fool everybody. That all of these spoilers wouldn't be real and we would think that Sasha is the person that Negan is talking to in that promo for tonight's episode, episode 15, and it's a completely different person. I'm just saying. But anyway, back to the review. So Jesus tries to talk Sasha out of this whole go after Negan thing and he tells her to talk to Maggie and she won't do it. Sasha tells Enid to protect Maggie. She's the future of Hilltop, meaning she's more than likely going to follow her comic book storyline and become a leader. But there is a storyline before that happens. And when that happens and as it unfolds, we'll chat about that. But I'm talking about what's happening in episode 14. So Sasha gives Enid a bracelet for Maggie's baby, who we will probably see in season eight if the writers are able to successfully compile a majority of what All Out War entails into the first 60 to maybe 70% of the season because All Out War is a really big story arc after which there's a huge time jump and we do get to see Maggie's kid and he's adorable. If they keep him as a he and they don't decide to just make he into a she, I'm just saying. So, Enid basically tells Sasha, listen, I'm going to tell Maggie what's up in about 10 minutes. So, in other words, it's time for you to figure out what you're going to do. So, then the saviors decide to make a visit to Hilltop. Not a big surprise. Sasha and Rosita escape through this hatch that um, we later learn that Maggie created so that the group would be able to escape quickly if anything happens. Maggie, Daryl, and Enid are running. Enid needs to find a place to hide Maggie and Daryl, and she decides to hide them in this underground cellar. Well, cellar is underground, but you get where I'm going with that. So all of a sudden, the saviors go into the big house, and here comes Simon, and I'm happy because I like Simon, because Simon's just like, whatever. He doesn't put on false airs, and he's just like, listen, if Gregory's going to be a brown noser, I'm going to go along with it. He's an idiot, but I'm just going to go along with it. But anyway, like I said, Gregory, major brown noser. So Simon asks about Daryl, but not in so many words. He basically knows that Daryl is there or is possibly at the hilltop. And we see Daryl standing at the door that leads into the cellar. And it seems like he's about to do something stupid. And Maggie ends up stopping him not once during their little scenes together, but twice. But this is the first time she stops him. So Rosita asks Sasha about the escape hatch, like who created that. And Sasha reveals, again, Maggie made it. Rosita sees Sasha wearing Abraham's necklace, the one made out of the broken taillight. 
And before she saw that, it seemed like she was trying to make some little chit-chat with um, Sasha, but then all of a sudden she just went back into her shell and became angry after seeing her wearing that necklace. She feels some type of way about that. So she reveals that somebody helped her learn how to disarm bombs because Sasha's trying to make small talk with her. And like I said, Rosita is just attitude at this point. And she tells her she's not here for small talk. Sasha talks about how she and Rosita can go into this building and shoot at Negan from afar. Now, I believe that this idea is another nod to the comics because when I believe it was Andrea, because she has a whole storyline that has yet to unfold. It's like a whole, it's like a little scene, but it's a very crazy scene that ends with just jaws on the ground until the next issue comes out. But anyway, Sasha wants to try to shoot Negan from afar. She's not too keen on trying to shoot him up close like Rosita did, and then they fail, and Sasha's just like, you know, I'm not gonna miss. Like, I just want to do this from afar. I don't want to do it close up. But Rosita wants to make sure that Negan dies this time. Like, she's adamant about this plan of shooting Negan face to face. So one savior moseys on around in the area near the cellar doors where Maggie and Daryl are hiding. Now, Enid's quick thinking. She grabs a basket with some melons, and I think there was some sort of zucchini or a cucumber or something in the basket, and she's, like, talking fast, and the guy's being all condescending because she's a girl, and because she's younger, he tells her to stop talking so fast and talk slowly, use your words, don't call them veggies, call them vegetables. He's just really extra, and he's just rude. So he... She thrust the basket into his hands, he thrusts it back, and she ends up dropping it because it's a little too heavy, and she told the dude, it's really heavy, like, could you take it to the truck, and I'll show you where everything else is, but he wasn't trying to hear that. Then he sees her knife, so then he ends up taking her knife. I'm just like, poor Enid. So he goes down in the cellar, he's looking around, and Daryl and Maggie are staying still. They're hiding behind some shelves or something, and they're watching him move around. So Simon basically is revealed to not only be looking for Daryl, but he decides, all right, I'm here for Daryl. You don't know where Daryl is, allegedly, so it's time for us to take Dr. Carson because Negan wants him and he needs a new doctor. Now, Dr. Carson's like, well, why the hell do you need a new doctor? Because my brother's over there. And then... Simon kind of like reveals with another one of his famous looks like dude the reason we need you is because your brother is dead and all of a sudden Dr. Carson is kind of like well I guess my brother finally pissed somebody off and got himself killed yeah but the thing is he cause he kind of pissed off Negan so that's the reason why he's dead and on a side note, people are like, well, that's kind of messed up, and he didn't really do anything, and why is Negan killing the only doctor? The reason why Negan is killing the only doctor that he has is because Negan planned on killing that doctor. Dude was on his list. He just needed a reason, and Dwight gave him that reason. <laughs> so pretty much, Simon says that Gregory needs to make arrangements <laughs> for a new doctor and then gives him their whole like stash of aspirin maybe it's not the whole stash maybe it's part of the stash but it's a big huge like box of aspirin and I'm just like what the hell can they do with aspirin if somebody gets shot they can give it to him for the pain but the aspirin can't like remove the bullets and can't sew the person up so Simon is making small talk with Dr. Carson Dr. Harlan Carson not the brother because you know the brother's dead but nice Dr. Carson from Hillside and he starts talking about how at the sanctuary they have ice cream and somebody who can make cardamom gelato and I'm just like what the heck doesn't the sanctuary have and somebody on Tumblr was like they don't have consent and I'm just like okay here we go <laughs> with that one 
So Gregory reveals himself to be a can-do guy, and he starts alluding to the fact that somebody might have crazy ideas and wants to take over, i.e. Maggie, but he doesn't say Maggie. And Simon says, you know, if you have problems, you can come see me at the sanctuary. So long as there are no shenanigans afoot, meaning nobody's trying to do something crazy, Sasha and Rosita, and go and attack the sanctuary. So I guess after this attack, pretty much Gregory's quote-unquote ass is grass as they say so Gregory tries to reason with Simon and begs Simon to leave Dr. Carson and Simon's just like no Negan needs Dr. Carson and I'm just like no it's not gonna work because you already turned over a few episodes back and showed your belly so Simon is not gonna listen to anything you have to say on a side note, I like when Simon shows up in the different episodes because he's funny, but I always wondered, how come it's been, say, 13 episodes since the last time Simon was in a scene with Negan? I'm wondering, is Simon one of those people always traveling or something? If any of you guys know the answer to that question or have figured that out, let me know. But I get the feeling like Simon is one of those folks, one of the saviors, like the second in command that's always out on the road. Because you rarely see him in the same scene as Negan. Like, I think the last time we saw him with Negan was in episode one when Glenn and Abraham died. But anyway, back to the review. So the savior dude is still in the cellar. He's like grabbing up like food supplies and stuff to take with the group back to the sanctuary. And we see Daryl about to make his second attempt to do something foolish and Maggie stops him and I'm like, thank God, cause God knows what was gonna happen if Daryl had stabbed this guy. Like this whole situation is not a really good situation. So there's a scene where Maggie is comforting Daryl, and I'm just like, I wish that Daryl could be the one comforting Maggie. I really do, because Maggie lost a lot. I know that Daryl did, but I think that Maggie should be the one comforted, because there's a lot of people online who are talking about how, like, a lot of the death scenes seem to be focused more on Daryl's pain than anybody else's pain, and... I didn't notice that at first, but after this particular scene I'm talking about, I'm just like, you know, he should be trying to calm down Maggie, not the other way around. So Gregory sees everybody side-eyeing him because he allowed the saviors to take Dr. Carson and Gregory's feeling some type of way. On a side note, you know that scene where Rosita and Sasha ended up at that used car dealership lot well that refers to Negan's backstory because Negan was revealed in here's Negan it's this um little teeny tiny anthology that is a part of image comics um monthly magazine called image plus and if memory serves they have been printing up and including this story in Image Plus since I think June or May or something like that, maybe July, somewhere in the spring, summer. And in each issue, there are four pages. And we learn, well, the people who have read it, learn that Negan was at one point a ping pong coach, a gym teacher, and quite possibly a car salesman, a used car salesman. So that's the significance of that scene. So Sasha and Rosita end up taking refuge in a building across from the sanctuary. Sasha sees Eugene ordering people around and she tells Rosita about it. Rosita's just like, why am I not surprised? This dude is obviously, once again, working some sort of angle. So Sasha says to Rosita, we got lucky having you with us. You know how to do everything. And that is true. But again, it makes me feel some type of way because it feels like Sasha is devaluing herself as a character because the group is blessed to have not only Sasha, who's an awesome sharpshooter, but Rosita, who knows a lot of stuff. Like, it's not just one person. Like, team family is beneficial as a whole. It's not just one person is more important than the other person. I'm not feeling that with the writing of this that's included in this episode. So... 
Sasha reveals that some dude Johnny taught her how to disarm bombs. This dude Marcus taught her how to do mechanical work on cars. And this guy Chaser taught her how to do knots. And the guys basically wanted to protect her. And she hated the way it felt, but she went along with it. And pretty much in the end, anything that they could do, she learned that she could do better. And Abraham was the only one who could handle her stuff. But she didn't say stuff, but I'm not going to say the word in this review. So, Rosita reveals that she acted like everything was all good when team family arrived at Alexandria, but it really wasn't. And she just couldn't adjust. And Sasha felt some type of way about Abraham's reaction to living in Alexandria and how he was able to adjust. And when he left her, she, Rosita, thought that she was angry at Sasha, but really she was angry because Abraham figured his stuff out before she did. And she never got a chance to tell him that she was happy, that he was happy with Sasha. And Sasha reveals that she was happy. Sasha also says that I guess we all want to go out that way, fighting. And she says to Rosita, and Rosita agrees that no matter what happens, no matter how it all goes down, I got your back. So Sasha sees Dr. Carson arrive. Negan pops out, but she can't get a clear shot at all. So they, she and Rosita, decide to listen in on the walkie-talkie and they hear Eugene talking and all of a sudden decide to change their plans and to go in and try to just take Negan out face to face again. Gregory is talking to Jesus being as rude as possible telling Jesus that he's been slacking on his finding people and getting supplies trips because he's really been staying in more than anything after Maggie arrived and Maggie's pregnant and he kind of wants to be there to be with Maggie and I completely understand that. Gregory says that Jesus has too many people in his trailer and these people need to pull their own weight and he has job assignments for him or for them. Gregory makes some messed up comment about taking care of his friends basically saying that he and Jesus aren't friends and I'm just like oh, man I can't stand Gregory. So Jesus leaves Gregory's um, office and comes upon Daryl and Daryl's just like where the hell is Sasha where is Rosita so the girls make it to the gate and they see Eugene talking to this dude and the dude I think is referring to Dwight because he was talking about how the person who had this job of being the night watchman didn't do what they were supposed to do. Then all of a sudden the dude gets shot in the head. Eugene is traumatized. The girls say, Eugene, let's go. We came to get you. Come on. And Eugene's just like, no, no, just go. I didn't ask you to come. And some people on social media were like, what is Eugene doing? Like Eugene needs to run. No, I believe on a side note that Eugene has a plan. His plan involves Dwight. Dwight who also has a plan of his own and the girl's plan is going to conflict with his plan so Eugene is kind of acting like ladies just go I got this covered just please go just go right now so Rosita after Eugene runs off decides that she wants to go inside and she wants Sasha to follow her and Sasha kind of stalls by saying, it's going to take me a bit to open up this lock. You need to watch and see just in case some other saviors come around. And what ends up happening is that Sasha ends up going inside of the gate and locking herself in. And she tells Rosita, go, it's not your time. There's got to be a point to it. They need you. Rosita is all upset. She tries to open up the gate. She can't do it. And then she ends up running off and she comes upon somebody standing in the dark. Now, a lot of people are saying that that person is Dwight. There's people saying that it's Daryl. Here's the thing with season seven, season six, and season five, but season seven in particular. This is how I'm going to close out this video. There are concurrent storylines. So sometimes you'll see people in the light and then you'll see people in the dark and you're just like, why is it jumping around? Concurrent storylines. So while Sasha and Rosita were in that building watching the sanctuary, Jesus and Daryl are talking and then they're preparing to go. 
Now the question is, who the heck is that person, the shadowy person? It's either Dwight or Daryl. Some people will be adamant and say it's more than likely Daryl, but you have to remember one thing and one thing only. Daryl and Dwight, pretty much right now, kind of sort of have the same hairstyle. Then there's the idea that Dwight has a crossbow like Daryl does. Then you have to understand that the look of Daryl mirrors the look of Dwight in the comic books. And a lot of people say, well, this is not the comic books. This is a TV show. Honey, season seven, they are taking so much from the comics and putting it in the show. So that could be Dwight. But I'm hoping that it's Daryl. So that Daryl and Rosita can go in that building and try their hardest to save Sasha. Because Sasha, it doesn't look good for Sasha. Now, I am hoping that things don't go the way that I think they're going to go. I'm hoping that the writers pull a fast one and make it seem like it's Sasha in that room talking to Negan or it's Negan talking to Sasha in that scene that they showed us in the little trailer and it ends up being somebody else because this is not the way I want Sasha to die. That storyline is rough and you'll see how it plays out. That's all that I can say. Tonight's episode, episode 15, is going to be a very sad episode. I don't want to say goodbye to Sasha. I know that Sonequa Martin Green is going to be on Star Trek, but I don't want it to play out the way that it is. But again, I'm not a writer. This is just my opinion. You all take care, and I will be reviewing episode 15. So until next time, I love you guys. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>